But uh, one time, I, I drive downtown. She was working. I went to meet her, and I, I uh, bring her flowers. And when I saw her, she says, didn't your brother tell you? My brother tell me what? Well, you should go back and ask her. I left a message for you. I said, my brother is in Richmond. I'm in downtown. You want me to drive back to Richmond, ask him what you have said to him to tell me? And you are here? Why can't you tell me? And she went to look at me and she says, well, it's finished. What is finished? You're done. Don't call me. Don't ever come here. I don't want to ever see you again. I know. What do you know? I know. I didn't know what she knows. <laughs> but she said, I know, and it's finished. Don't call me. I said, OK. So I went home, and three days later, I get a phone call. She says, I need to see you right now. And I'm waiting outside my house till you come. I said, OK. So I go there. So why didn't you call me? You told me not to call you. <laughs> yeah, I said that, but you should call me. Like, These people are very confusing. <laughs> we Persians, when we say something, we mean it, you know? <laughs> I mean, here, you know, I heard the first time I heard, I said, uh, that the couple came to me and said, you know, my husband says, I love you, honey, but I'm not in love with you. I said, what? What's that? <laughs> you know? It, it's like you have all this different range of emotions you feel about someone. You tell somebody, I love you. And, and you know, I like you very much. You OK? You know? Hey, you know, hey, hey. And then, I don't like this person that much. <laughs> and all the way to I hate you, it's a full range of things, you know? For us, we're very simple. I love you, and I'm willing to lay down my life for you. Yeah. I don't like you, and you die. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you know, this is, most pastors, when they do weddings and they say, you know, do you understand? This is, you know, in happiness and sadness, in riches of poor, you know, in health and sickness, till death do us part. You, you are willing to honor this person? You know, most Caucasians are hesitant to say that. It's like a lifetime guarantee commitment. I wasn't at all worried. I said, Honey, I will love you till death do us part. And if you're mean to me, death can't be arranged. <laughs> I don't understand why you white people have so much problem with, with teenagers. My kids know my father was a member of Hezbollah. <laughs> and so, and, and that day in prison, I was upset Iranian style. I said to God, that's it. You know what? You don't even exist. You don't even exist. Because all my life, I have tried to serve you. I have done everything in my power to serve you, to make you happy, to please you. I have prayed prayers, I have read the Quran, I have fasted extra, I have done everything in my power to serve you. But that wasn't good enough. You come and confuse me with the name of Jesus, then you don't show me the way to follow you. From now on, I will go and live my own life. I will live a life that I think I should, and when I die, if there is a God, and if there is a day of judgment, that God cannot judge me. Because they say God is able to see hearts. And he knew in my heart, I love him. What does it matter to him what name I call him? Because he knew I mean him. And if it does matter to him what name I should call him, then I have asked him, tell me. I will follow you. I will do anything you say. But you confuse me first, 
and you don't answer me. It is your fault that I'm in this boat. <laughs> it was. It wasn't my fault, you know. Yeah. Airplane, that's right. <laughs> that boat would be my mother's fault, you know. <laughs> And I said, you know what? I'm going to go live my own life. And I'm going to do what I want. And when I die, if there is a God, and he judges me, then he's not just. And if he's not just, what does it matter if I follow him or not? Because he's going to judge me unjustly anyways. My wife says I should have been a lawyer. <laughs> but foolishly drawing a line for God, I didn't think this will happen, but this is what happened at that moment. The moment I said these things, the whole room filled with the presence of God. And I don't know how to explain that. I mean, when God is in a place, you know. No one needs to do anything. No one needs to announce anything. You know. Because every cell in your body cries out. You are in the presence of God. And you know, when God comes in a place, He's not too concerned with the horns or some people shouting with this or that. He's the most gentle, he's a humble God. But just because he's gentle and humble, that does not mean anything because every cell in your body cries out and shouts in the presence of an almighty God. And that moment when God entered the room, immediately I knew two things about him. One, that he's a holy God. Number two, that he's a just God. And the moment I knew these things, that very moment, it is as if time has stopped and things are becoming clear. That very moment that I know these things about him, I had revelations about myself, that I am an unholy person, and I'm unjust. And that didn't make sense, really, because all my life I had done everything that was right according to the law. But I knew, I knew, no one was there to judge me. I knew that I am unholy, and I'm unjust. I ran to the corner of the room, and I literally was in, crawled into a space like a ball. I brought my knees right up to my face, and I buried my face in between my knees, and I held uh, the rest of my head in my arms, and I just kept crying out, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Now you must understand, as a Muslim, God does not come to visit you. In the Quran it says, it is not well for Allah to have a meeting face to face with any human being. That is why Prophet Muhammad never had an uh, encounter with Allah himself. The angel came to him. But in the Quran it teaches that Allah will come to destroy the infidel. And I had become an infidel. And in the Islam, they also have an unforgivable sin, that is shirk. Basically, to, to have a God, to place a God beside God. And when you elevate yourself to a place that say, I will make decision for my life, you have elevated yourself to a place of God, and you are saying, God will not decide for me, I am not submitted to God, which Muslims mean, but I will decide for my life. At this point, you have committed the, mo the only unforgivable sin, and 
you will never be forgiven. And I had done that. In the Quran, it teaches that Allah will come, He Himself will come and destroy the infidels. Now I felt God is in the room, and I thought He has come to destroy me. I knew that I have sinned, and I knew that I deserve to die. But I ran to the corner of the room, hoping to find a refuge, and I'm crying out for forgiveness, but knowing that forgiveness is not a possibility for me. Now, my brother was sharing about growing up in a household that uh, knew Jesus. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I wish I could have grown up with the knowledge of such a God. I wish I could have grown up knowing that God is so forgiving. I wish I knew God is so loving. I wish I knew that the story of prodigal son is a reality. I didn't grow up with such things. And I was just crying out, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, knowing there is no hope. As I kept crying out, forgive me, forgive me, I felt a touch on my shoulder and a voice that said, I forgive you. <laughs> and the moment I heard, I forgive you, I felt physically forgiven. I felt as if those words grew arms and reached into the depth of my heart and soul and grabbed hold of every sin in my life and yanked it right out of me. And I didn't know exactly how that is possible because in Islam we say in the name of Allah who is merciful and gracious, but we don't know if we are forgiven on earth. We must die, we must wait for the day of Qiyamah or the day of resurrection or judgment, and on that day we will know who is forgiven who is not. That is why in the Quran there is not even one reference to one time even that, that Muhammad himself has been forgiven or will go to heaven. Prophet Muhammad, like everyone else, needs to wait for the day of judgment. On that day, Allah will let everybody know who is going to heaven and who will go to hell. Most probably we assume that Prophet Muhammad, being the best Muslim, will go to heaven. But not guaranteed. So I did not understand how God can forgive me and I feel forgiven today. I knew this is God and I knew I have been forgiven, but I didn't know how this is possible. I said, God has forgiven me, but how can he do that? This is God, but I don't know anything about this God. So I said, who are you that forgives me and I feel forgiven today? And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I thought to myself, I know God does not speak foolishly, and these words mean something great. But I don't know what they mean. I've never heard these words. I don't know what that means. So I said, I don't understand. What is your name? He said, Jesus Christ, the living God. And I fell on my face. Now, I wept that day. I wept for some two hours. Um, just basking in his love. After some two hours or so, he said, I should look up. And I looked up and I saw a TV screen. Um, it was like a TV screen, I should say. And I saw people of all different nations and all different generations. And I could see their sins. And he said, I said, God, I live among all these sinners. He says, Afshin, how easy did I forgive you? I said, oh, very easy. As easy as drinking water. That is a Persian saying. As easy as drinking water. And then I thought, no, 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 wait a minute. Even easier than that. 
And he says, Ashin, I can forgive every one of them as easy as I've forgiven you. But who's going to tell them? Yeah. And I said, I will. 